check the flag again and these are the rotor head secrets of an auto gyro or at least of a model auto gyro basically what I'm doing here is I'm testing the uh, rotor head here this is a Magni uh, M16 I just got a tool for uh, some new blades, so I've been testing uh, these blades on the uh, both on this one and also on the uh, Easy 1.25 line. It's very similar to the 1.25 size. So and these are the blades from the 1.25, the Mia Microflight Easy line. So basically, what we're looking here is a teetering head, and what I like to uh, obtain is I like to obtain a nice smooth uh, rotor that's free from uh, vibration. It's got a slight vibration there, but that's uh, just a matter of retweaking the balance on the blades. And what I want to feel is for lift. And I'm trying to feel for, for a good lift and a good RPM. And it's just by, I use this as my, my test setup for small uh, auto gyros. And it's been working uh, extremely well. Uh, if the blades are spinning up uh, nice and smoothly and the rotor seems to be stable you know if I jiggle the, the model the rotor wants to come back to the same location same position that's an indication of rotor stability and there are some uh, tricks that can be done on the rotor head this on the rotor head design itself that allows for the uh, stability in uh, uh, in its design so that's what I'm trying to uh, obtained here and this is basically what the purpose of this video is for is just to make sure I capture a nice smooth and you can see the model wants to lift out of my hand and you can hear the nice whoosh, whooshing sound of the rotor and it's pretty stable if I tilt the motor to the right to the left the rotor as long as it maintains uh, RPM the rotor wants to come back to its uh, original location so I've done already some test flights of this particular model. Uh, you can see those on my YouTube uh, channel. But I'll be doing some more flying because I really like this, uh, this particular uh, style. This is not my own design. It's based on the real M16 by Magni, uh, which is basically uh, a design based off of the uh, Benson structure, you know, the basin and in, in vertical stabilizer. I believe Magni bought the uh, plans from uh, Benson uh, before they started the company and they, they learned on those uh, auto gyros, they learned to fly, they learned some of the tricks that was embedded into the Benson design and they went ahead and improved on that design. That's how the Magni line came about. So basically this is a design, a design base off of the Magni and I got uh, other scales uh, or other sizes rather on this particular line that I'm working on. This has been my test bed for the uh, for the larger ones. Okay, this is Mario again with me on Microflight, and uh, let me talk a little more about the, the rotor head. Okay, so we're talking about the secrets of the rotor head design and model auto gyros. Uh, this particular design is a uh, what they call a teetering head, and it's teetering because it teeters about a uh, uh, central pin here. The trick to obtaining uh, stability is to allow the blades to teeter but also you want to limit that movement and the way that's done by limiting is by putting some kind of a rubber uh, I'm using an o-ring here to limit the, the stability and provide some cushion to the, to the uh, teetering uh, section of the, the head. If you don't have that damping or cushion there, that rubber o-ring or grommet, you know, this would just flop and you could easily lose rotational speed if you enter in, uh, in the dive, you know, if you enter a, a, a negative condition where the blades are going to stop uh, moving. Uh, basically, at that point, there is no, no recovery. So one of, the, one of the ways to prevent that from happening is to introduce some kind of damping on the flex plates have that already built in by the nature of the flex plate 
uh, being out, out of fiberglass and it flexes, so the blades have that uh, damping there. And uh, of course, that's, that's also done to uh, experimentation to find just the right amount of flexing that you have because you don't want a, a rotor head that flexes too much because then you lose a uh, lift. So that's one of the secrets about the teetering head as we're employing on this particular uh, model. And once again, I finished the place. I went ahead and recovered them and painted them. So we'll give it a spin here, just a gentle spin, and let the air build up. Now this model will take off just by with a gentle breeze. As you can see here, there is no pre-rotator uh, engaged at this point. And if the blades are calibrated and balanced properly, you should see one rotor disc. Notice that this has one, it said at the same level, both blades. So that, that you want that because that allows for a very smooth look, look how it's look, look how it's hovering in place there. And basically that's what you want. Look how stable the rotor is. So you want that disc to be uh, both plates to be in, in the same path of rotation on the same disc and that is only acquired by balancing the blades properly and making sure everything spins smooth. Now this particular model does have a pre-rotator, a design with a pre-rotator um, which engages uh, when the model is in uh, bottom elevator, full bottom elevator and engages the pre-rotator. I use the elevator all the way down at, at, uh, at the maximum uh, uh, lower level. We can engage the pre-rotator as I did with this particular model. There are way, other ways to engage the pre-rotator. If you have a transmitter with a potentiometer that can engage on, on one of the uh, spare channels, you can do that also. But on my particular transmitter, I don't have a potentiometer. I have switches and you don't want a switch to engage the, uh, the speed control for the for the pre-rotator because that engages too too abruptly, too hard, and, and it can ruin. The, it can basically strip the gear of the the pre-rotator, the, the main gear here. So you want to engage that very very slowly, and and, uh, and once you get that that going, that's about the right speed you know that you want. Once you get that going, and you start moving the model forward. It eventually picks up, and if you have a rotor that's uh, very stable. It, this should lift up almost like an airplane lifts up, you know, just a foamy part flyer. You know, very, very, very gentle, you know, with, just with throttle control. You won't, you won't. Throttle control, you won't, you won't even need to to engage uh, elevator uh, uh, pitch uh, uh, control there. Uh, what else about this model, this particular model? The, uh, as I was saying, this is based on the uh, Magni M16, but it's got, of course, when you do models, you have to introduce your own, uh, your own techniques. Um, in a lot of these uh, models that I do, I introduce some techniques that I've learned through the years, just years of experimentation and designing my own uh, aircraft, miniature aircraft that I've learned. So a lot of those things are, are transferring to some of these models. You'll notice that it's got the, the uh, as far as the design is concerned, it's got the basic design with this bracket here, which is typical of the Magni uh, real aircraft. But it also has this other bracket here for my motor. Now that's, that's mine. I did that just to uh, push the, the motor forward so that the propeller comes in line with this point here, which is very much in the scale. Uh, this also, I made this also so that I can uh, 
uh, yeah, tilt the, uh, the propeller and engage uh, in, in a different angle. So it's got a, another set screw here. And this re really pivots at the center point here, this bolt here. This whole assembly pivots. And that's the reason for these brackets. And that's the reason for that hole. On the other side, you can see that it's got the screw already. Once I found that preset angle that I, that I wanted, typically this, this, uh, this uh, angle is about uh, three, three degrees from the, from the uh, horizontal. Three degrees up is the, the offset, the vertical offset for, for uh, typical uh, auto, auto gyro of this uh, caliber. So you can see here the set screw is already fixed because I already found out what my uh, proper angle, uh, cross, uh, cross line angle was and I set that with that set screw. It's really wants to fly, so I'm going to be taking it today for another flight. Um, other than that, the control is basic uh, elevon control, where you you have uh, left and right is mixed with the uh, aileron, up and down. You pull your your stick uh, back, and it, it pitches up. You push the stick forward and it pitches forward, pitches down. It's basically just a, like the real thing is, is control. It's a very nice it's a very nice model when things are, are properly done, properly calibrated, it flies beautifully. It's well appreciated in the uh, videos that I'll be uh, posting along with this uh, uh, commentary. And this is a comparison with the uh, other one that I'm building at, at 1.5 at the 1.25 scale, like the easy Mia Easy line. This is the uh, the frame, which has already been uh, assembled. And all I have to do is uh, finish the molds for the uh, body, do the fins, do the motor mount, and strap the uh, rotor head. This will probably uh, use the, uh, the same uh, rotor heads that I've been using on the Mia Easy line, just for simplicity. They're very simple heads. Not like this one, this is very much in scale to the real thing. I will be doing a scale one for this particular one as well, but I will leave that, for, you know, this, is, this takes a lot more work and I, I want to get this flying as, as quickly as possible, so I'll be using the uh, more simplistic Mia rotor heads. Um, but eventually it'll help the, the, the more in scale one, this is just like the real thing.